Dubai is dead. Set against 0% tax for companies anymore. You thought of the UAE as a zero tax haven, but there have been changes, even beyond the ones that we've talked about before, that many companies in Dubai and the UAE are gonna have to start paying a 9% tax. Today, we're gonna discuss exactly what's happening. I recently got a call from a very wealthy gentleman who lives in Dubai and says, you know, I like it here, but there's this new 9% tax which applies to my company. And it wasn't supposed to be that way. When the UAE came out a little less than two years ago in the wake of this global minimum tax discussion where big corporations with hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue doing business all over the world will be subject to a new minimum 15% tax, the UAE came out and said, okay, we have 0% corporate tax and 0% personal income tax. We're gonna now implement a 9% corporate tax, but don't worry, and I was interviewed on the radio in Dubai at the time, don't worry, it's going to apply only to onshore companies that are doing business locally. So the store you go to, the Starbucks, the, the people who work at the mall, they're gonna pay the 9% tax. And if you are in one of the free zones, uh, where you pay 0%. You know, if you're working with the wrong people, you know, there'll be a few restrictions, but it'll be easy enough. And I came and I said, hey, free zones should still work. Don't worry about the 9% tax. It wasn't that long ago that some rules were clarified, and I'm gonna share those with you today, where more of those companies that were supposed to stay at 0% tax, that people thought would stay at 0% tax in a free zone, are now gonna be subject to the 9%, just like the gentleman who called me. And here's the reality. There are places, if, you're, if your fundamental goal is reducing corporate tax, there are places where you can go and pay less than 9%. There are places where you can go and use multi-part structures, and you can live in Europe and pay less than 9%. So the first question here is, number one, do you want to live in Dubai or the country itself, the UAE? If that's of interest to you, uh, then there are some strategies you should take a look at. Should you have your company in the UAE? Should you have your company somewhere else? I quite frankly think that UAE free zone companies were largely designed to be used for people who live there. There's a number of things that are just really frustrating to do remotely, in my opinion, and in my CFO's opinion. Uh, so the question is, do you want to live in Dubai? If the answer is yes, I really want to live in Dubai, not for the tax benefits, but because I just love being here then it's worth having a conversation, but you may be better off just paying the 9%. Obviously, you're not, generally speaking, working towards citizenship the way you might in some other countries. That could be factored in for some people. Uh, if you do not want to live in the UAE and you just thought, hey, Dubai is the future, I'm hearing about it, uh, you know, bridge between Europe and Asia, then uh, the question is, why would you pay 9% for a country that you're not living in? That's the decision that we made in our company. We moved uh, a good part of our operations uh, out of Hong Kong and into the UAE a couple years ago. And we kind of took a reading the tea leaves view. Generally, I've been right on reading the tea leaves. Obviously, we've been talking about a lot of stuff here uh, for well over a decade, and a lot of it has come true. On this, I said, I think it'll be a number of years before uh, the UAE rolls out some kind of tax on free zones, because my idea was like in Hong Kong, where if you live in Hong Kong, you have a residence permit, you have some kind of ties to the to the uh, the jurisdiction, and you have a company incorporated there, you're going to pay tax. It's in the teens, it's reasonable, you can take deductions, but you're going to pay. If you don't have any ties to Hong Kong, and you can go through an offshore profits claim, then you can theoretically pay zero in Hong Kong. Other jurisdictions like Barbados used to have a similar you know structure, a multi-part, you know, if you're here, if you're not, here's two different rates. They got bullied to get rid of that. But I thought, okay, the UAE is a, is, a, is a strong enough country. Geopolitically, they're kind of going in different directions. And so, you know, okay, I think they can withstand it. They'll have 9%, you know, onshore, and they'll keep it 0% with a few, you know, caveats offshore. But hey, the caveats are easy enough to manage. And so with that, we put our company in the UAE. And I found it to be frustrating to manage remotely. And when these changes came, I said, got on the phone with the CFO talk to the business manager, talk to all of our various professionals that we work with, all the jurisdictions. And I said, you know, if you have a finance team or even if you have someone to help, the stuff that happens in a place like Hong Kong, we've got to file an audit every year, isn't really that difficult for the much easier banking experience 
for the greater experience of having your company accepted for banks in other jurisdictions, like UAE free zones are harder to bank around the world. So you're kind of relegated to banking in the UAE. I mean, if you want to put $5 million in, we have, you know, a great Swiss bank that'll take you. Um, but for, you know, for, for decent, you know, treasury management for smaller companies, you know, a, a, a place outside of a UAE free zone or really any free zone is going to have an easier time getting banks. So anyway, the bottom line is when the 9% tax became clear that would apply to us, I just said, it's not worth it. If I lived in Dubai and I was driving in the roads and I was sending my children to the schools, I said, you know, perhaps you could argue that, you know, it's the price to pay. But uh, like many people who have, you know, 0% tax companies somewhere else, I pay uh, at the local level. Where is it I, as the owner of uh, the company, uh, live? And so, you know, I have plenty of strategies. For many years, I traveled around the world. No country really wanted to tax me after I'd given up my U.S. citizenship because I wasn't meeting the criteria really in any of them. So I set up a tax residence that was convenient. Now, perhaps I'll spend more time in a country and, you know, I'll pay some tax there. But we decided to move the company up because let's go through the criteria of who has a so-called qualifying activity, uh, which means that you will remain at zero tax. And if you do not have a qualifying activity, I'm not here to give you tax advice, but it is uh, our assessment and the assessment of numerous tax professionals that we work with in the UAE uh, who have evaluated this, that you are going to pay 9% starting in 2024. Now, I'm sure there's no shortage of sleazy Dubai promoters who run ads on Instagram and they mislead. Oh, there's a, there's a golden visa for $10,000 and all the different stuff they do. There is a whole culture of, of folks who have set up shop there and they have one thing to sell you and that's Dubai. And uh, by hook or crook, they will get you to go to Dubai. That's nothing different. I mean, as we've told you for years, there are people who have one product to sell you in whatever country they're in, and that's the panacea. But here are the qualifying activities. Manufacturing, processing, and distribution of goods. So if you're manufacturing stuff uh, in the UAE, uh, that could be fine. Again, not this is not tax advice. This is just the list, subject to interpretation. Holding of shares and securities. So you have a hold co, uh, you want to get a brokerage account, I think not every brokerage account that comes to my mind accepts UAE free zone entities, but to the extent that some do, holding of shares and securities, easy enough. Ownership, management, and operation of ships. If you're the new uh, Onassis, uh, you can run that in the UAE. They'd love to have your shipping business. Reinsurance, fund management, wealth, and investment management services. Interesting you know, to see how you could splice that for certain people who are, let's say, in the crypto industry, um, you know, reinsurance, probably not something most of us are doing, but uh, fund management. Okay, I know some people running funds, wealth and investment management, obviously something that's regulated, but they've been more open to that and I think they've been pretty open. Headquarters services, treasury and financing services to related parties, financing, leasing of aircraft, distribution of goods uh, in or from a designated zone, logistics services, ancillary activities. So you're seeing kind of like if you're doing logistics, if you're manufacturing, if you're distributing stuff, uh, if you're providing kind of treasury and financing services, uh, if you're in financial services, or if you're in ships, uh, then uh, you can continue, it would appear to operate in the free zones at uh, that 0%. Onshore, just gonna be the 9%. Obviously the other issue is if you're working with, doing a lot of business with other companies in the UAE, uh, that could be non-qualifying. Things that are not countered. Qualifying income does not include income derived from excluded activities. Uh, so transactions with natural persons, except for qualifying uh, activities, banking, insurance, finance, and leasing activities that are certified are subject to uh, regulatory oversight. Ownership or exploitation of UAE immovable property, excluding commercial property in a free zone. So if you're buying real estate in the UAE, that is changing. Ownership or exploitation of IP assets. Here's the uh, advice that we got. We have uh, trademarks, IP. What happens if we leave those trademarks in the UAE? If you want to play it straight, and as you know, I'm the goody two-shoes of the offshore business. We recommend playing it straight. We're not chancers around here. We don't take needless chances. We do everything right so we can sleep well at night. That's the, that's the approach we try and take. Obviously, there are some folks attracted to any jurisdiction that want to be chancers and uh, they probably wouldn't enjoy working with us because we like to make sure you can sleep at night. But the advice that we got 
was that uh, you would have to have your headquarters somewhere else. If you moved the headquarters but kept the IP, the headquarters should pay uh, an appraised rate, whatever that trademark is worth. What's the you know what do you what do you have to pay every year, and that the payments for those trademarks would be then taxed nine percent. So I don't know what that would be. Could be ten thousand a year. Could be a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, I have not gone through the process of appraising our trademarks, and we're adding some more trademarks in different jurisdictions as we speak. Those would all need to be compensated to the UAE entity and then taxed at 9%. So what we're seeing is if you do something that's less tangible, uh, there's a chance that you might have to pay. I mean, it's maybe some tangible stuff too. Pay 9%. The question is, you know, what is your use case for having your company incorporated in the UAE? Or if you haven't done that yet and you were considering it, what's the reason why you were considering it? I'm not against paying 9%. I personally would like to pay nine, my 9% nine to a place where I'm living. And so I would rather say, okay, as I'm slowing down my travel a little bit, as I'm spending not that much time at a couple of my bases, you know what? I'd rather live somewhere with a favorable tax regime and I will pay less than 9% and I'll pay it to the country I'm actually living there, right? I will pay some lesser amount than that. If you like living in Dubai, or any, again, could be Abu Dhabi, could be uh, Rosh Al-Khama, could be wherever you live in the UAE, and you're like, you know what, I love it here, I want to contribute, I have nothing wrong with that. It's a nice thing to do. You might also say, I don't want to contribute, and okay, I don't judge you for that either. <laughs> you know, call us and we'll help you figure out, you know, where else you might want to put your company. So you have to understand your use case. And if you don't want to pay 9% because you're not there, or you just don't think it's worth it, uh, we help clients figure out where to live, where to put their companies. If you're looking to move out of Dubai, some people might want to do that. If you're looking to stay there and figure out some other structure, there might be a way to do that. If you're just starting and you've kind of followed the herd, Dubai is kind of the place the last couple of years. By the way, I think what they've done is incredible there. They've gone out and gotten the best opinions from some really smart people. If you look at how the government runs, they hire actually smart people to be their ministers, unlike Western countries who hire political hacks to run things. They've done an incredible job building it. But now they're saying, we have a critical mass of people. People are going to keep coming for the lifestyle. It is an incredibly safe part of the world. Uh, people are going to come from all over the world, especially from places like Asia and Africa, because it's so close, right? And those people aren't going to necessarily go to the Cayman Islands. It's a pain to get to. I mean, Dubai is a hub. Abu Dhabi is a hub. There is a value. The question is, if, you're, if your job is, hey, I make $5 million a year, do I want to pay $450,000 for that? That's a question you should ask. We work at Nomad Calpus with dozens of different jurisdictions. We've got lawyers and accountants and CPAs and immigration people and all the professionals. And we have the knowledge of how those things work. And we create multi-jurisdictional strategies. Maybe the UAE is one of the jurisdictions in your strategy. Maybe living there is part of what you do. Maybe it's not. But rather than just say the answer to everything is Dubai, 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 and then watch the 9% noose come down and snap your neck, it would probably be a good idea to look at all the different jurisdictions, including, as I always say, ones that you probably didn't think of as low tax. Because if you make um, more than 1.1 million euros per year, you would pay less tax living in Italy under their lump sum program with a proper structure. Just as an example, you didn't think Italy was low tax, but if you're going to live in Dubai and you're going to pay 9% tax, 100,000 euros in Italy, and you're working towards citizenship. Maybe you would have rather lived in Italy, but you just thought, oh, well, they don't have low taxes. Let me just go to the place that is zero, zero, zero. It's not zero, zero, zero anymore for plenty of companies. There are still some people who will qualify, so please take the nuance here. But I want you to understand your options, and if you're already there, uh, feel free to call us and figure out how you can actually make sure you're not going to get yourself into a problem.